Hello everybody. I'm sure you as well as us are very excited now with the world opening up again and travel again opening up and we are going to be doing some overseas trip trips this year and more next year. And a question that seems to come the moment I mentioned that I'm going to be traveling in places perhaps more adventurous than Australia, more unknown. Well, how do you handle bureaucracy, crossing borders, um, officialdom, red tape, that I think scares quite a few people, it worries them. Nobody likes that whole you, you're in a, at, at a border crossing and it's passports and the people aren't friendly and you're not sure you've got the right paperwork and mm. now you've got to have a COVID passport or something or, oh man, yeah. So the, in, the, in the Overland Workshop, Paul and I talk about this in, in quite a lot of detail and one of the things that Paul said was, was your, and it's a bit of a cliche, but it's absolutely apt, is your attitude will determine your altitude. And it's all about attitude. And we've got some stories to tell. And I remember one so, so vividly. We were, we were driving into Botswana from South Africa. We were in the 110, the white 110. So it was a long time ago. A long time ago. And in front of us, I remember it being a highlight. I just remember vehicles. Actually, I'm going to interrupt you. Okay. What makes this story even more relevant was that it was a long time ago and it was still in the days of apartheid in South yes, Africa. It, yes. So there was a fair bit of hostility between South Africa and Botswana. So border crossings were fraught. Yeah, you, you could have good ones and bad ones. And I saw a bad one coming up. I remember it was a, it was a Hilux and three guys were arguing with the border official. And we had sat in our car for half an hour. We had done all our paperwork and now it was the final vehicle check before going through. We had been there not particularly long, I don't remember. I don't remember that part of it, but what happened next I remember because the border official clearly was so ticked off. They had given him such a hard time yeah. about just doing his job. Yeah. He wasn't being officious, he wasn't being unpleasant. But He was doing his job. Yeah. So I remember saying to you, something's going down here, and the guy turned to walk towards us and he had this mean look in his face, and I said to you, just follow my lead. And you realise exactly what was going on at the same time, without me really having to tell you, tell you, because I opened the back of the Land Rover, and the guy just looked straight at me and said, I want to search your car, menacingly. And I said, certainly, sir. I looked at him in the eye. I took my sunglasses off. You use all of the ammunition you have at your disposal. And one of them is, don't leave your sunglasses on. Okay? Eye to eye contact. Take them off so there's no barrier between you. And I opened the back of the Land Rover and you jumped inside and just started handing me bags. Checking stuff out. And when he said, on such a car, I said, which bag would you like to look at first? This one? Would you like to look at this one? And I was putting them, and he was so shocked by that, that he took a, a step back and went through one of the bags. And I asked him, I said, I haven't seen you in this before. I was here last year. Uh, do you live in the area? No, came his reply. I live in Kasani. I said, your family's in Kasani, which was 800 k's away or so? I said, your family's in Kasani? Yes, my family's in Kasani. I said, that's... That must be terrible on you. You've got no family close by. We had a 10 minute discussion about his family and about how he was having a hard time because he was away from his family. All we did is help him do his job. And try and engage him in a genuine way. In a genuine way. No, it was absolutely genuine. I think he looked through one bag, maybe two. And asked just to look in the fridge, which they need to do to make sure there's no imp importation of meat and let us go. Whereas the car in front of us was being stripped. They had emptied that car. They had completely emptied that car. So again, it's about attitude. So Paul, I've watched Paul go through border posts and he is a master 
he, uh, he always, I always have a smile on my face watching Paul go through, because he says hello to everybody in the local language. So he'll just say, hello, how are you doing today? You know, or big smile. He, I don't know how he does it, but huge smile on his face, joking with the, with the border officials. But we had one very good experience with a border official. Before we get into that, I just want to, um, something that we teach in Overland Workshop is often at borders, you'll get um, people arrive to come and help you. Yes. And Paul goes into how you handle that. That's right. In a lot of detail yeah. in the course. Yes, he does. How to handle and how to recognize whether they're, the, they're good at their job or, or, or yes. And so th that is a, a service we've used quite often actually. You find a good one and you pick up and you are by asking a few questions and you can pick up they know what you're doing and for twenty dollars he's we were going through victoria falls mm. in eight, 2018 he saved us 40 50 minutes yeah we were we were through in, in but in, the, the the tricks of the trade in yes. dealing with them yes and those are talking they can be really good but, but i have but, that wonderful but, okay so that would have been what year would that 1990. be 1990 it was 90 was it our honeymoon it was our honeymoon okay. we had yeah. just got married and it just so happened that Namibia had recently received their independence. Yes, they were Southwest Africa. And they had they officially be become, become Namibia. Namibia. And um, we arrived at, a, it was hot. It was October mm -hmm. in Southern Africa. Hot. hot. Hot as 40 month. plus. 40 plus, yeah. And we kind of sweltered over to the not air conditioned little uh, hut. passport control hut, hut. hut yes and there was no passport control guy so we're thinking oh, okay this is a great start to a new country and we hang around for a minute or two and we hear whistling in comes the passport guy and official. he says yes. the official He's whistling He'd something obviously just been to the loo yeah. and he was wiping his hands because they were wet and he looks at us and he smiled and he said, you coming into Namibia? And we said, yes, we are. He says, well, my hands are wet. By now they're bone dry. He says, <laughs> my hands are wet. wet you need to stamp your passport yes. for me. So I opened my passport and I said, where do I stamp it? He said, you can pick any page you like. So I opened it to the middle and went, fuck, stamped myself and into Namibia. And then he said, now you. Looked at me, you. He said, I want to see your photos. So I opened the photo and he said, is that you? He didn't look at the passport. He just looked at me and said, is that you? Yes, he said, tampered. <laughs> and they what were a pleasure. So, they were so happy about their new country. Yes. It was fantastic to just watch it. And that was a little, little slice of, uh, of life, of a new, a new, new, new country. It was wonderful. It was wonderful. It was, we just walked out of there and left with great smiles on our faces mm -hmm. with that story that we will never forget. And again it was, if we had arrived there anxious, we wouldn't have picked up on the fact that he was joking when he said, I can't touch a passport, my hands are wet. You do it. You stamp your passport. Which was mm -hmm. obviously not the case. Yes. I mean, had we been worried, expecting we might... Expecting trouble. Expecting trouble, we might not have... We may have found trouble, but instead, yes. we had this amazing experience. Yeah. So there are a lot more like this. Uh, that's one particular uh, subject that we cover on Overland Workshop in a lot of detail. And um, we we'll welcome you to uh, join us there, overlandworkshop.com. Thank you for watching.